Hey booze! In this video, I give commentary based on my opinion. Nothing is to be taken as factual. We are just here to have conversation. We don't expose and we don't sip tea on this channel. I'm giving you real talk straight, no chaser. Let's see if you can handle it. Cause I'm a boss. I didn't think for you to be proud of her. Of course you have. You are marrying a man who can support you. So Anton said that black women are the real enemies. Now, I found this clip to be shocking this was emailed to me. Um, shout out to the girl that emailed me. I really do appreciate it because she she brought this to my attention. I don't I didn't see this panel. I don't really tune in to other YouTubers because I'm busy. So when I came across this panel, I'm like, what the hell? When did he say this? It's shocking because he's married to a black woman. He has a black daughter. But he said that black women are the real enemy. So let me go ahead and play this clip law and you know how i know it ain't equal because at the same time that y'all advocating for more feminism more equal rights for equal play y'all advocating against family court laws and updating the laws that wasn't even designated or or allocated for y'all in the first place it wasn't even meant for y'all y'all took advantage of the system y'all fucking up our community it's y'all fault do you think it's equal or they're fighting for superiority i just wanted to based on what they you they call it a devil that's what they are I would say Did somebody steal your wheels recently? When when a woman is broke, she gets governor men assistance. Hey, Mr. Lego, Mr. Lego, you can't do that no more. You can't do that no more. You cannot do that no more. You're not doing that this show. No, you're not. Because I'm watching. Yeah, yeah, he goes. Y'all see them. No, you gotta stay on hold. You gotta stay on hold. Hey, they all say he gotta read the super chats. Yo, Ali is butt hurt. No, they can literally. No, no, no. Think about it. They can literally take a man's make take a man. Send him to jail. his name on a birth certificate in order to get benefits mm -hmm. for it. And he's responsible for that child, even if the even if the federal government know that it's not his kid. Fact. It's men going to jail today for child support for kids that's not even theirs. Not even theirs. That's crazy. And y'all want to sit here and have conversations with us about responsibility? First, you're going to have to come to the table in honesty and in truth and being real about the situation that y'all putting these guys in and y'all putting yourselves in. Y'all can't even come and be honest with who y'all are and y'all want us to be able to support y'all and protect y'all and hold y'all down and marry y'all. And then y'all wondering why black people, why black men is divesting themselves against these women. What makes you think that they want to be with y'all and y'all not even honest with yourselves and coming to the table? Honestly, we don't even ask nothing from y'all. We don't ask y'all to do nothing for us. We don't ask y'all to bring money to the table. We don't ask y'all to support us. We don't ask shit from y'all. Ladies, are you, are you hearing that? Are, are you hearing that? So I don't need to come. I don't need to show up to no protest because he not asking for nothing. I don't need to come out of pocket for no donations when it comes to these shootings because they don't be asking for nothing. That's what he just said. You guys, I hope you listening because say no more. Say no more. I've already put the cape. I took the cape off. So he's saying we don't got to do nothing, ladies. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. So stand down step back let these men let the gentlemen handle it okay let them handle it because clearly 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 they don't be asking us for nothing that's what he said so i'm gonna I'm go with what he's saying all we are is behind the eight ball because we can subject very relate to is really our enemy because they won't even be honest with what it is that they bring into the table. You bring in lies, deceits, irresponsibility, and you're looking to get a you're looking to get saved and you're looking to retire. All they do is use us. They don't actually add value. You want to know what's really wrong with the black community is that the woman is out of her purpose and she's not a help meet no more. Yep. She's the enemy. She's more of an enemy than a white man ever has. She's more of an enemy than anybody in history has ever been to the black community because she's the very person now um you guys know what bed bucking is, right? You you guys know what that is. Now, he said that the black woman was the bigger enemy than the white man. But damn, every time you try to get these men to get a job, you try to say, hey, we, we need more money. 
oh, the white man hold me down. He hold me back. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I could come through on the rent. I don't know if I could come through on the car payment. I don't know if I could come through. Okay. Um, are we talking about the same white man that had you bent over and took your manhood on the plantation, right? And he did it in front of everybody. He had you bent over, took your manhood in front of your family, stripped you of your manhood. Are, are we talking about the, that same white man? I, I need somebody to clarify that for me because um, these men were bent over, humiliated, manhood just stripped. And us as black women had to witness that our ancestors had to witness that are we talking about the same white man is that the same white man that we're talking about so is it shocking to me that he's out here creating all of this content defending pearly things <laughs> no no it's, it's not shocking I don't know why this is shocking to black men out here. They're like, well, I don't, I don't know why he cooning like that, huh? Well, he just told you that the black woman is the biggest enemy to the, it, it, ain't, it ain't the white man. Crazy. Crazy. Because we had to witness your manhood being stripped from you. That's crazy. And we still stood by your side afterwards, by the way. So that's, that's crazy. But I, okay, it you know, listen, ladies, it is what it is. It is what it is. That's why black women need to focus on themselves. I don't know why y'all keep putting all this energy into these men. If you would just stop trying to fix, stop trying to please, stop trying to worship and take all that energy that they don't want and you pour it back into yourself. Oh my gosh. Person that comes in with deceit and looks to use you and then, dis and then disperse of you when she's done with you. And then she'll move on when it's all, it's all said and done. And then say, well, what about the kids? Fuck them kids and fuck that woman too. I Throw that hoe out with the bathwater. Throw the baby out with the bathwater. Start the fuck over. Get a whole new group of women. And then, and then fix the community that way. Because we tired I, I of these I can't relate. I, I don't know if this mm. is like a personal thing. I, no, it's real. No, I'm not the problem real. in the community. I'm married to my woman. I've been married for almost 19 years. I never had a child out of wetlock. And I still got to look at my paycheck and say, who the fuck is these little kids I'm that I'm now, I, I want you guys to remember that he called black women hoes right here in this section here. OK, just keep that in mind for later. So. Let me go ahead. And remove this clip. Brittany, do you have anything to say regarding all of that, sis? So I wish you would have let it like play just a little bit because I was like, who are you talking to? He was like, you, you are the problem. Like he pointed to me and was like, I'm talking about you, women like you. And I'm like, you're not talking about me because you're talking about people who are, you know, um, like, I don't know. He was talking about like welfare and stuff like that. Like, every every person that's a mom or a single mom or, or an unmarried mother or mm -hmm. whatever is not all out here struggling. Like, and we're not out here taking money from your paychecks. I so, feel like black women are prideful when it comes to government assistance. Yeah, they are actually. Even when they uh, need it, they don't apply for it, actually. So when he was saying that, I don't know, Anton confuses me because it's like he's one way on the panel. And then, thank you, Lucky. Sorry. <laughs> um, he's one way on the panel, but then it's like, it's like, I want to see you win, but it's like, do you? Like, I'm confused because it's like, one minute he's like, oh, B. Taylor, I see potential in you. But then it's the, it's the way he said it. it. It was, I don't know. He confuses me. And I did not agree with what he said. It's like, you're pushing the stereotype out here. I understand he wants better, I guess, for black women, maybe. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I'm just seeing that clip from like the outside because I was on the panel. Right. So seeing it from like, the outside in its entirety and he just confuses me because it's like when people see meet him in person apparently he's not like that so i don't know if it's like a character <laughs> maybe for entertainment i don't know 
It don't align. And I'm just be real with you. It don't align because how you married to a whole black woman and this is how you're speaking to it's other hard. black women. It's like you right. you speaking to black women and you have a message. That's not the way to do it. That's mm -hmm. not the way to do it. That's not how you you insulting us, telling us that we're the enemy and we're 304s and if your children like that to me, like when you're on those type of panels, you can't react. You know, you can't react like, oh, man, I'm so offended. I'm so mad that you said that because I'm thinking about myself. Like, who are you talking to? Who, right. who is? Who are you right. talking about? You know, but it's like because if I was to react, then I'm demonized. It's like, right. let that man speak. But if I say something back and rebuttal, it's why are you being so emotional? Mm. I'm a woman. I'm supposed to be. Don't right. Use, don't use my womanhood against me and say I'm being emotional when I'm a woman. I'm supposed to be. Right. But when y'all be emotional, should I call that out? What, where's your manhood at? What, where's your masculinity? You know? Right. So I, that's a lot to take in. Sorry, I'm kind of like. Well, girl, I got another clip for you. So okay. hold on to your feet, girl. Y'all are on. Uh, hold on. Let me, can I? Crazy. What is wrong with y'all? Y'all keep on trying to can figure out how to how to fix the commute like y'all y'all putting spare parts on up cars the problem yeah, is that's that what i'm saying like i wasn't oh. well, i'm a lamborghini no, you not a lot of lamborghini stop thinking that you you're not a lamborghini well, you okay? you're not a lamborghini like i don't know who told you you was a you're not a lamborghini. Anyways, let me let me get back you're not gonna, you're not gonna interrupt me anyways like i was saying see every single time you eventually no no you're not gonna interrupt me Every single time, eventually you pull that dumb up out of them, and then they want to—they want to get crazy and masculine and all of that, and then they get out of it. First, she's relaxed. Oh no, I'm—I'm I'm just so chill, and I don't care because I'm a country bumpkin, and I know what drugs really? and all of this other type of stuff. And they, 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 we hear this every single new person that come on the panel. They come on here acting like they living in their femininity, and that just come on right up out of them as soon as you tell them that they're not a Lamborghini, you're not an exotic car. You 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 not from France. You're not from Germany. You're not from Great Britain. And you could never touch. You're not. Me. You're not. You're not. Stop. 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 You could never touch me. I know. You I don't want to. I me. seen your <laughs> stretch marks. You're not hot. Who the f told you you was hot? I seen your stretch marks. Like I seen right. your stomach out. Stop. And you're not. And you're not 160 either. You're not 160. You are hot. You are hot 205 at best. At best. So fuck. Just I'm leave me alone. You don't want to do this. I'm going to make you famous. Leave it alone. Make now, me famous. The point that I was making before you interrupted me, trying to tell me what kind of exotic car you are. Now, the point that I was making is the problem with the community is broken households. It's broken households. We trying to figure out how to co-parent instead of be parents. And the issue, especially when it comes to children, is that they don't give a about what you say. They live their life and they learn based off of what they see. And so if your daddy ain't with your mama, then they then carry that into whatever it is that they see in their life. And then their life becomes a reflection of the things that they advocated for in the household, which is why we call it generational curses, because we're passing down issues, not based off of what it is that you say, but what it is that you do onto them, which they then carry that. And then it exponentially multiplies because the child is paying for the sins of their fathers and their mothers. And so when you start to see certain things happen in the community, we're not having conversations on how it is that we need to have strong households. Because first and foremost, it's statistically proven that the way in which you build wealth and strong communities is by having two parents in the household. Oh, born rich. Oh, shut the fuck up. I'm so tired of this chick interrupting me. All in her masculine energy, still talking that dumb shit. But I was born rich. Shut up you ain't born rich anyways like i was saying the point that i was making is that and it's always a black woman that want to derail your point why man why is it always a fucking american black woman that want to derail your point just gotta jump in and i'm born rich man, nobody give a about what you talking about and if i don't clip this up and then make you famous we gonna forget about you in two weeks nobody cares about what it is that you think we don't care. We don't care. We don't care. Take your stretch marks and get the out of here. We don't give a fuck. Take your bro. We don't care. We don't Take care. Shut the shit up. Shut the shit up. Off. Matter of fact, get the out of here. I'm sick of these man. I hate you hoes. I hate these fucking masculine that come up on here and think that they can 
shit to me. What the fuck you talking about? I'm going to do a whole fucking show on you tomorrow. Just because. And I didn't even plan on live streaming tomorrow. I'm going to do a whole fucking show at the airport at your monkey ass with them wide stretch marks. Ugh, just piss me off, man. I hate these people, man. This is why black men don't want to marry you. You did not get married because a man didn't want, because you chose to. You didn't get married because you ain't marriageable. It ain't, no, it ain't a dude in the world. Not a, Mr. Let Go, and you make sure you wear a condom, please. Hate, and matter of fact, don't even her, just her mouth. Sick of these bro. Yo, I hate bro. you, I hate you. I hate you masculine that jump on the panel, talk and then think you a reflection of the community. You trash. You're garbage. You're nothing. You're a throwaway. Nobody wants a 40 year old woman with stretch marks talking about you a Lamborghini. You a fiesta. You a pinto. You're ran through. You're nothing. You're trash. We don't care how many laps you do around the around the around the roller rink. Aye, 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 aye. Say something. B, did you have anything that you wanted to add? Because I saw how you just your avatar came up and you you seem like you just checked up out of there. Um, oh, I was cringing just even like that. It makes my heart hurt because that, oh, okay. I'm more upset with the men on the panel as well because nobody checked his behavior. Nobody mm -hmm. stood up and said anything. But let mm -hmm. a woman start running her mouth like that. Ooh. All the men are shutting her ass down. All mm -hmm. the men are stepping in, telling her to miss the let go. Shut up. Shut up. No one said nothing. You know what they did? They did it behind closed doors. They don't, want to him. they don't want to say anything to him in front of the public. They're going to do it behind closed doors. I regret that I didn't hop off. I should have quit right then and there and hopped off because mm -hmm. I didn't. At that moment, I was battling with myself as a woman because mm -hmm. I tried to jump in and tell her, hey, don't tell them too much about yourself. Don't put yourself out there. Don't be trying to, you know, because she gave him her Instagram. Mm -hmm. and I looked at it, too, and I was like, dang. All right. Well, there's the target, you know, like she, you know, showing her body or I guess she had a crop top and, you know, she's a mom, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, they called moms oatmeal pies because their stomachs look like an oatmeal pie. So that's, that's okay. yeah. And I have said, don't say that, you know. So like, the, the, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. The men on the show were saying, who was saying that? <laughs> the oatmeal pies, can you say? Ooh, uh, it, he's not, he wasn't on the panel um, okay. that night, but he has definitely, if you do your search or maybe somebody can put that, I don't want to say, cause you know. I don't want to say just because, yeah, but it, I've been told like, oh, nobody wants your oatmeal pie. And it's like, so you're saying mothers have an oatmeal pie. They risk their life to give children. They're like, yeah, we look at y'all like that. Or women don't even have kids have stretch marks. So that's something that's just like that could be yeah. natural because of a growth spurt. So to talk about somebody's stretch marks is low. You know, because your daughter can get stretch marks, your wife can get stretch marks after having a baby. So it's just Men like stretch marks. If they if they Men take their ass marks. to the gym and start pumping that iron, you're gonna get it right in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we see you don't be at the gym like that. <laughs> so I for me, it was like I I was more in a battle with myself because in that moment I tried to step in and she's like, No, I got this, I got this. And I'm like Okay, girl, I'm trying to warn you how this is, and I'm trying mm -hmm. to warn her, but she's like, "No, I got it." But I felt like it was if it, if it wasn't her, I felt like it was in the it was gonna be me, right? I felt like that. Like, when am I next? That's how in that moment. That's how I felt like. When am I next? When are they gonna make a moment out of B Taylor gets kicked off panel? Like, you know how many views they would get off of that? Just for just disparaging me out of all this time that I didn't came on and supported the channel. You know, mm -hmm. like when when am I next? That's how I looked at it, and then I also had to. I struggled with myself. Like I should have just got took a stand as a woman mm -hmm. and just completely left. I took my avatar off and just like contemplated, like I, I want to get off, but I wasn't. I I wasn't. Um, I don't know how to explain it. I think I just wasn't. Um, you know, I I have to be honest with you, B. 
sometimes we as black women, when we're in those hostile environments, yeah. our nervous system is activated. Yeah. And sometimes we freeze up. We don't know what to do. We, we feel flighty, mm -hmm. but sometimes we just don't do anything because we also have that mindset. No, stand your ground, be strong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We can't even act on our sensitivity. We, we can't act on how this is making us feel uncomfortable. Yeah. So a lot of times us as black women, we subject ourselves to verbal abuse because we feel like we have to, because we have to be strong and we have to show our strength. Mm -hmm. So I understand why you didn't leave. Because when you're in that position as a black woman, you know, they're going to attack you either way. Whether you yeah. decide to disconnect or you decide to try to stand up for her, you weren't going to win that fight. No, I wasn't. I was you outnumbered were. and I'm the only one that, you know, like as vocal. And then she came on. And usually when it's new people that come on, it's like it's like a. Uh, initiation type thing like oh new fresh blood <laughs> fresh mm -hmm. blood and they don't they come on not really knowing you know what what what's about to happen next you know mm -hmm. so they come on and they're just they about to they they come on not knowing they came on like I did I didn't know I wasn't you know yeah and yeah, I didn't expect yeah. it to go like that but I feel like if it wasn't her the way I was talking that night I was like I was surprised it's on it didn't go off on me. <laughs> black black women need to be aware that when it comes to these panels, these men are setting you up to be ambushed and you need to be on game. I will you say shout to out to the crew season though, because they are that those are the people that I did. Now, how do they be treating you on that panel? They treat me very nice. Okay. 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 About Trill. Trill is married. Mm -hmm. uh, he's married to a black woman. And mm -hmm. they don't let it go too far. They step okay. in and I've gotten altercations on the cruise season with other people. And what he do, he'll cut it off and be like, hey, now we're going to keep it respectful. Y'all mm -hmm. not going to be disrespecting each other. Like it's more of a safer environment over there, I will say. Um, mm -hmm. Like you can kind of let your guard down at times, depending on who is on the panel. But you know, shout out to the cruise season because... That is, um, I am going to be making my exit from the Manosphere, but that the crew season, I do support them because they actually are balanced and they see both sides. I actually learned a lot from over there. So they, I don't right. count them as the Manosphere. You know? Right. But Black women, listen, these men don't have a show without you. You got to know your worth in business. You got to know your worth in business. You got to know your worth in personal uh, your your domestic life. You got to know your worth. These men do not have a show without you. The topic got to be about you. And then you also got to show up. It's just a bunch of men talking on a panel with other men. They, there's no show. Even if it's non-Black women on a panel, it's not going to be what it is. So know your worth. Black women need to, you need to know your worth. Your worth is there is no entertainment without your support without your talent that's true without that's your true. opinion all of it all of what you are is worthy and you need to understand that and you got to also understand that these men are getting paid off of your humiliation they're getting paid off of your public embarrassment they getting that check so i i'm, I'm gonna ask you are you getting that check are you getting that same check that they're getting? You no. got to know your worth. You got to know your worth in business. And I'm yeah. not speaking on you personally at all. I'm speaking. No, I need to listen to it because I don't. I think as black women, we really don't negotiate for ourselves. And mm -hmm. like they, they want to praise Pearly for giving black men jobs. But these same black men that are like saying that y'all not giving us jobs. Y'all not paying us. Y'all want us to come on and do it, everything for free. And, and we're taking our time to support. And like, what are we getting out of it? Cause I have my own platform. So I can see why some women do come on because they don't have a platform and they're trying to build their audience, but be careful what type of audience you're trying to build. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because not and all audience is good audience. They no. hate you. They'll follow you just to hate you. No, I and, and this is just free game. This is coming from someone that's been doing this for a very long time. Listen, when you create a platform, it takes time. I know collabing, right? It will grow your audience faster. I get that. But the audience that you build, that matters. That matters. 
That's why I don't allow certain language on my platform because I don't want to, I don't want to attract a certain subscriber group. I don't like using the word pick me, mammies. I don't like making fun of black men and their sexuality because there are gay men out here, gay black men out here that I respect. So I don't, I don't use that type of language. You know, I don't like that type of language. I like to hopefully bring on, I'm, I'm, I'm calling in my tribe who can have a respectful conversation with one another. I really do. Thank you, Cruise Season. I really do appreciate that. But you got to understand, like, you got to know your worth in business. This is why you don't see me on these platforms. I know if I went on a platform, my I would be able to, to just drive up my subscriber count. But it's not going to be worth it because my sanity is gone. My mental health is declining. And you got to understand that when you show up on online, your personality, it needs to show. And it can't show if you're depressed, your mental health is taking a hit. So you got to guard your mind. You got to guard your mental health. You can't just expose yourself to everything. Let me and, tell you, honey, that what yeah. you're saying is resonating with me so hard because, you know, I think it is dangerous to listen to some of these platforms and you're a single mom mm. because the stuff that they say and the way they tell you you're just a pump and dump, they'll come on my page and comment the most hateful, like probably for the past several months I've been getting, you're nothing but a pump and dump. Your, your child's a bastard, da, 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 like whatever. They're talking about me so bad. And it just makes me like look at myself like I'm the worst mother in the world because like I failed my kids. I'm horrible. There's no hope. Like you start like your it starts getting in your subconscious, you know, like mm -hmm. you're just like mm -hmm. this horrible person and somebody who's like not mm -hmm. mentally well, they could think about hurting themselves or, you know, or do, running off from their kids because they're just, they feel like they're just this big failure that they're labeling them. They may just run off and do something, you know? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Hey, just, I'm, I'm it's telling not you. good for your self-esteem. It's not good for your self-esteem. It's not no, good for not. your health. It's not good for women who want to have kids and they telling them they hit the wall and they're scared of, you know, like they want to go and rush and settle and just be with some guy just so they can just say, I got a ring. I got a ring. When some of these women got a ring and not happy. So it's just like right. this is the goal to be in a healthy relationship, not just any relationship. They promote any relationship and that's what they don't seem to understand. They don't really seem to understand. You know, growing up, I saw miserable people divorced. I saw miserable people single. I saw miserable people married. I saw miserable, miserable people shacking up. I saw miserable people in parenthood. I saw miserable people that didn't have kids. Yeah. And as you get older, you start to understand through growth, through healing, that the only way you can truly guarantee your happiness is with peace. It's not with another person. This generation, the world that we live in is very obsessed with being with someone. And it they will put their whole livelihood on the line just to be with someone not the right one but with someone and they push that heavy on women and it, it it really doesn't make sense because your happiness doesn't come from these different milestones that you may experience in this lifetime it actually comes from being at peace with where you are and that's why we are in this rat race in this system. We're constantly chasing status. We're constantly chasing recognition. We're constantly chasing the next step, the next milestone. Yet when we get it, we don't even enjoy it for real. We're, we're going to the next and then the next and then the next. And you don't even get to really enjoy the experience. Yeah. It's getting worse with social media. Yeah. It's getting worse because now we're chasing clout, likes, materialism, money. Peace is where your happiness lies. Yeah. It may be with someone. It may not. It may be you being a single mother because I've seen single moms in marriages. That yeah. man running her in the that. ground. Yeah, running her in the ground. And she's just discombobulated. She's not happy. She's stressed. She's, she's strung out. And to be honest, she would be happier if she got rid of that man mm -hmm. because he's not contributing. If he was contributing, then of course... It would make sense, right? But she has 
If the woman has two kids, she got a man that's not doing what he needs to do as a man. She got three kids. Child, speak on it. <laughs> so according to, but if, if we listen to these men who don't have wives, who are not married, who don't run a home, who are not leading the house with children in it, they will try to convince you that you need to stay with that man. You need to stay with that man. So you got to take on a third child. You got to make sure he's fed, he's clothed. And you would be better off getting rid of the, the third dependent that you have and just take care, care of the true dependence that you're truly responsible for. Because it can end very badly with you being, I mean, I, I don't know if y'all seen lately, like in the news, but the, the rate, the increased rate of domestic violence situations on both ends and children being caught in the crossfire because these toxic couples are staying together for the family and they don't need to be together. Like if you're in a situation and you're a mom and you with a man, you sticking by that man, you trying so hard at the extent of your mental health and you can't even, you coming in stress every day. Let me tell you something about children. They rather see two active parents working together and raising them mm -hmm. than be in a home where y'all not having family dinners together y'all not going on vacation mom and dad always fighting mom and dad don't even talk to each other you're not seeing mommy and daddy kiss they don't get along what is a better environment for that child of course a two-parent home i would never advocate for a single parent household right 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 but it right. is what it is right it's 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 like what as a child would you rather see your parents fighting every day not because that child's going to grow up and think that's what love looks like. They're going to be right, right. keeping that same cycle. They don't know how to have intimacy other than sex because they never see mom get hugged. They never see dad treat mom right. They never see mom treat dad right. So which one is it? A lot of these talking a points. In a healthy situation where it's like, maybe we didn't work out romantically, but we could come together as if that child doesn't even feel like their parents are not there. The ideal, yes, is a two-parent home, but if that two-parent home is 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 a toxic environment, leading up, y'all putting y'all hands on each other, y'all fighting, you stressed out because he ain't doing this and he you ain't doing that, and you you cannot be a good woman in a relationship with a man that is a toxic environment. So if you want to be a good woman. You got to go and heal and separate from that man because yeah, it ain't going to happen. You staying in that household, trying to be a mom, taking care of a man, being his mama too. It ain't going to happen. But you know, you know what's so funny about these conversations is the fact that some of these men be in relationships with women they don't even want to go home to but want to speak on your situation. It don't make no sense to me. Um, Have you ever been in a situation where you don't even want to go home? You sit in your car, you sit, sit, sit. Girl. Sit, sit, sit. Sit, 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 sit. Sitting in them cars that you get off of work, just sitting up, just, just sitting, sitting hanging out. Car. Like, oh, gotta go in this house. I've got to deal with you. Yeah, no, that's when you, you know, know it's, 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 it's that's not that's not how you live your life. And even men do it. Even they won't admit it. You know how men are. They don't. They'll talk to their homeboys about it. They may talk to their homeboys homeboys about it, but they won't tell us about it. They hide that part. Yeah. Right. But they don't even want to go in their own house. But they, you know what they say? They they want to say, well, 80% of women file for divorce. But men may not file, but they'll mentally check out. And women, yeah. you know what no, I'm talking about. That on where a man mentally check out. Yep. He don't want to He don't want to talk to you. Yep. He come in. He laughing on his phone. He going to places. And he not paying no attention to you. He don't want to do date night. He don't want to watch a movie with you. He want to go out with his friends on the weekends. He don't mm -hmm. hang out with you. He talking to other females. He don't support you in no way possible since you in that relationship by yourself. He don't even like you. Let's be for real. Why he, he don't even like you? No, he don't no, even no. like who you are. Nope. He Can't literally is annoyed with the sight of you. Yep. And I think, you know, women are just becoming a little more logical about it. Like, this man really don't like me. Oh, my God. He actually hates me. He just showed me he hates me. You know what? Let me go ahead and leave this situation. It's not easy. And I would never tell a woman who is, if it's not like a abusive I wouldn't advocate and tell a woman to just leave if she right. has kids because, like, it's not easy. And no, it's not I, easy. I'm not, I'm not going to be helping you pay your bills. I'm not going to be helping you babysit them kids. Sis, make a plan and try to get it. If he don't want to work together and get counseling and working on because you can't change just by yourself. He got to make the changes, too. Like, yeah. and, 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 like, women, this is where I say we hold ourselves accountable 
if you're in a toxic relationship, it ain't just him, sis. <laughs> like it takes two, the, yeah. you know, like what, you know, to yeah. play into that. And it know? could be something like people pleasing, being too damn yeah. nice. But we did have our uh, whole white women. We had our beautiful white women on the panel. Now, understand for some black women, right? This could be triggering. We are going to review the video. One thing that I've dedicated myself to doing from now on since I got into the content creation space is that I said that I was going to let you guys come up on the panel, give your perspective or opinion respectfully, make sure you don't have on no bonnets, make sure you get yourself together, get your little Vaseline on your lips. If you need to get your makeup done, fellas, get your do-rags off your head, whatever. I am going to open up the panel a little bit later in the show for us to be able to continue the conversation. So you guys, I am making three slots available. I think that uh, sometimes depending on the subject to have more than three um, is disruptive. So it will be a first come first serve. I will be rotating people out depending on how much they contribute into, into the conversation, so on and so forth. But I will make three spots available for people that wanna come up on the panel and have conversations and give their opinion based off of what they seen last night. Now, if you didn't subscribe to the Lapeef Network, if you have not hit a like for the YouTube algorithm, if you're not a bag chaser, I cannot promise you priority, okay? I will tell you that I will allow people to be able to come up on the panel to give their input, um, their insight and information about our beautiful white women that we had on last night. Uh, shout out to just pearly things. <laughs> That's my girl. That is my girl. Um, but I didn't feel disrespected last night, even though there were different op uh, opinions and different perspective. The one thing that y'all have to understand is that when we put together these panels or we have these conversations, we're not trying to exist in an echo chamber. So we always wanna have conversations with people that may think differently than us or from a, all walks of life so that we can, um, in totality, really break down what it is that we're discussing for the subject for that night, right? Because I'm gonna tell you, listen, when I look at this panel, I see that beautiful white woman, Carmen. <laughs> all right. I see that uh, Siobhan is gorgeous. I mean, all of the ladies look good, right? But I'm, I'm gonna focus specifically on the white women, all right? Let me, let me make myself uh, <laughs> mental size. We all know that Coach K is gorgeous, all right? Mm -hmm. You got my girl Pearl over there. Pearl, mm. I love my white women. I love everybody. Coach K is gorgeous. Coach, Coach K is gorgeous. She's she's beautiful. She's cute. I'll so, give her that. You know, her. we just going to start getting into it. Carmen's We're going to start too. breaking it down. Carmen's cute too. Coach K and Carmen are cute. Yeah. I just... Anyways, all right. So we got to get into the show. Um, let me put myself in queue at the bottom. But we don't want to cover up our beautiful... You guys, is he simping? Is, is that what they calling it now? Simping? Is that what simping is? Cause I thought they, I thought in the black space, black men on space, but they didn't do that. Crazy how they can simp for white women, but they can't simp for us. That's interesting. But I don't even be looking for it at this point. It is what it is. But it just seemed like he simping real hard. This man is a married man simping like this. This is crazy to me. This is crazy to me. I'm like he out here really simping hard, and he married. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta make some adjustments. All right, let's get into it. Y'all look. So let me fast forward. Well, let's get our BBLs it. going out of style. Who wants to go ahead and tackle this first? I go. <laughs> hey, can, can we use an example on the panel? Mm, I guess. Curse for life. I'm telling you. Still, come on. First of all, I don't know. Have a BBL. What are you talking about? <laughs> I got no BBL. This is homegrown. What you mean? Oh, well, I'm just saying. It, it's you, a, you can fool somebody. So I'm just saying. You remember the you remember the price is right. Now I have to be real with you guys. Y'all know how I feel about BBLs. I'm against them. Not because we listen, you can argue if they're safe or not. I don't care about that. You attract the wrong attention. So I've been speaking out against BBLs before anybody, really. And I got dragged and bashed for it. And the reason why I was giving women free game on BBLs is because I had a very hard time coming up. Okay. When you have, when you have assets, 
you get treated a certain way. It's not fun. It's not loving. It's not even valuable. It's aggressive. It's sexual harassment, sexual abuse. It's not fun. So there's always going to be cons when it comes to decisions that you make in your life as a woman. And you got to decide whether or not is it worth the risk or is it not worth the risk? In my opinion, a BBL is not worth the horrible treatment that women get. Men don't look at you in the face. They don't. They don't value you. They just want to sleep with you, toss you to the side and move on to the next. Because day one, that was their intentions when they saw your ass. And it just don't get no realer than that. So you got to be on game when it comes to these bills. And so they, listen, they could talk about how I don't like it. Ain't, it's For me as a woman, it's not even about that because I don't care what men don't like. What I don't like as a woman is being treated like I'm some type of object. So it's really that simple. If you do get it done, right? Because they treat women who are naturally built this way like an object. So if you go and get it and they know that you got it, what you think going to happen? So that's why I was against it. I wasn't against it because of, oh, I just want to be against it just to be against it. I was against it because I did not like the treatment that I experienced as a young girl being thick. It was not fun. People don't even try to get to know your personality. They just want to take advantage of you. And it's, you know, the crazy thing about it, it was men way older than me. It was boys my age and it was boys younger than me. So I always had to worry about if a man was with me because he wanted to be with me or if he was with me for other reasons. And, you know, a lot of these men, they put on a performance. Oh, yeah, they'll play the they'll play a good role, girl. Some of them should be out here winning Oscars. That's how well they perform, especially when they find out you're not easy. So they'll play the long game with you, wait it out. That's why I was against it. But at the end of the day, listen. Women going to do what they going to do. You going to learn when you going to learn. If you still go through with it, I just wouldn't go big. I wouldn't. I would get something very natural looking. I wouldn't go super big. I can, I, can I attest to that? Because mm -hmm. I, I have a friend that recently, she had a nice body before. And mm -hmm. I ended up, she ended up getting a BBL. And she even says it is a different type of attention that she was put off because there were certain guys around her that she liked. And then they start acting real, real, like, different because they wanted to fly her out and do all these things. But she said it's not a good thing because they're all just sexual. Yep. And that's, like, when me and her went out, there were some guys that, like, paid for my entire tab just because. And he was just like, you're just so nice and da da da, da. But then the guy that paid for her stuff was, like, wanting to sleep with her. Like, he was mm -hmm. already like, okay, so what's up? I pay for your stuff. She was like, girl, I'm just so used to that. And like, you know, so it does come with that's the attraction. That's the type of attention you are going to get And sexual attention. Let me tell you something that I learned in these spaces with men. Just because a man is giving you some sexual attention doesn't mean he like you. They will sleep with you. And once they call, can I say this? It's called the post nut clarity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, girl. I don't know if the women know about that. Have y'all talked about that over here? I, I, not, that not that I talk about it kind of differently, but go ahead and give your opinion. Okay, let me tell you what the men have told me. So a man can wine and dine you, take you out, hit you up, be consistent until he sleeps with you. Why does he switch up so bad? You wondering why? Why he switch up? He was so consistent until after we slept together a few times. It's called post nut clarity. They really don't like you. Sometimes their lust will make them think that they like you. And then once they get that clarity, they realize you're not my type. And it's nothing that's wrong with you, right? Like, I don't want you to think like, oh, something's wrong with me. I'm not pretty enough. It's just that he has clarity to think about things and not of him wanting sex. Like, mm -hmm. he actually getting to know you because he can get to know you and be like, oh, I don't really care. I don't really like him. Like, I don't, I don't really like her like that, but I, I rock with her. Like she cool people because men will friend zone you and, and men do friend zone and different men will friend zone you and sleep with you, spend time with you, take you out, stay over, cuddle, 
Netflix and chill, cook for you, but you're their friend. They just, mm-hmm. they think you cool. I don't want to try to get some other people in there. Uh, Can I go? Go ahead, Pearl. I was taking notes. I was taking notes. Um, I feel like the BBLs have started to look like diapers, where it's like I'm gonna go, the butts I'm gonna listen like to Pearl and I'm gonna listen I don't know. To I think Taylor. like it's and not necessarily that they've down and gone go out of the style. Section. It's just like I agree with you. I think they've gone too far to the point where it's just looking like silly. Because I've even had girls come on my show, and I'm like, girl, what on earth did you do in Columbia or wherever you get those done? I'm gonna go to B Taylor. A thing, but for the longest, we were shamed for our curves. Our hips, our butts, our legs, everything was shame. The white girl was the beauty standard. Her small. So, do y'all think that women were shamed for their curves? Because, and I'm going to tell you why I'm saying that this may be a little bit off personally. I thought that even, even when you look at the early depictions of slave masters and, you know, them sleeping with the slaves and stuff like that, they loved. And they would often at time get them chicks pregnant that they were sleeping with and they would have kids and, and have mixed kids inside of the house in which the kids would then be, you know, that house. Dude. This man, this is why men shouldn't speak for women. I don't like speaking for men and men shouldn't speak for women. And the reason is because we have different experiences in, in the system that we live in. So he's comparing us being awed and sexually abused during slavery and thinking that that's attraction that that we were seen as valuable we were seen as animals we were seen as animals you gotta know your history so that was very ignorant of him to even say that as a black person i don't even know why he would say something like that This is why men should not speak for women and our experiences. It, it logically, it doesn't even make sense. They would, I'm they would just ask them. Me. Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm asked why I'm asking the question, though, right? So she's right. At one point in time, decades ago, the 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 beauty standard was very slim, very slender type of women. Well, Right. So that was definitely a beauty standard at long time ago. Right. So she's right about that point. But that was decades before we was even born. OK, so let's so let's assume that for the sake of conversation, that that was the beauty standard. Right. That it was slim, whatever, so on and so forth. Right. If that was the beauty standard, then why wasn't women trying to meet that beauty standard? Like, why wasn't black women specifically trying to meet that beauty standard? <laughs> Okay, I just want to start with this. Whose mama out here did the Jenny Craig diet? <laughs> okay. Who, I, who, I, the whose, early mama, who, whose mama whose mom was out here doing Weight Watchers? My my mama did it. My grandmother did it. They they was going to the Weight Watchers meeting together. They were supporting one another. But listen, this is what black men need to understand about black women. Our hormones. Okay, if you do not get us out of this survival state, we're not going to be the the size that we could be. And it doesn't get any realer than that. A woman's body is very sensitive. If a woman carries a lot of her weight in her thighs, her hips, her ass, even the lower part of her tummy, she has higher estrogen levels. So if her hormones are not balanced, if her cortisol levels which is the stress hormone that can trigger her hormone level, she's going to blow up. She's going to be big as a house because she's not being cared for in the way that she needs to be. And black women have been left uncared for for a very long time. So we think it's genetics. We, We think it's genetics. We think we just big. What was the saying back in the day? Where... It was uh, we big bone. Oh, Ooh. big bone, yeah. <laughs> no, we not. We have hormonal issues. We have hormonal imbalancing issues. We have trauma that's stored in our uh, stomach. We have um, cortisol levels that are unbalanced. 
I talk mm. about this all the time. So if black men are really trying to help black women lose weight, bring on a doctor. Bring on a doctor. What a That's lot of really, them are uh, having it's weight it's issues. The root of it. A lot of them are having weight issues because they're working and taking care of the kids and taking care of you. And they don't never have time for themselves to eat healthy. They don't have time for themselves to go to the gym. They don't have that luxury, especially living in poverty. No, you know what's so funny? Men be like, oh, she divorced me. She lost weight. I'm sure she did. I'm, I'm pretty sure she was able to do that after she divorced you because she's not stressed. She's able <laughs> to look after herself and she's able to go to the gym consistently. So stop asking that question. Stop asking that question. But I'm going to be real with you. A lot of black women are just uneducated when it comes to their bodies. They don't know. They don't, they, they don't know. They don't know that if their thighs are thick, their hips are wide, and they carry this lower pouch, that they actually have higher estrogen levels, mm. and they're not balanced. And they need to balance them. There's so many different supplements that you can get into, teas that you can get into. But a lot of black women don't even know this. They just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. They just mm -hmm. trying to survive. But let's actually dive deeper when it comes to this conversation. I'm not against black women losing weight. I'm not against that at all. But we need to start being real about it. Those cortisol levels when it comes to black women and how it triggers um, them to uh, offset their hormones, it's killing us. This is yeah. why we have issues with our uterus. We have issues with our womb. We're doing all of these external things and it's not working. It's because it's a deeper issue. Mm. It's a deeper issue. These men don't want to talk about that. They want to compare us to white women. White women don't have our struggle when it comes to our anatomy, our bi biology, our genetics. They don't have our bodies. They don't. No, because we're the most, we're statistically higher has a higher chance of dying at childbirth than they do. Yes, we have thyroid issues, fibroid issues. There's a reason why black women have all of these hormone, these uh, womanly issues when it comes to our body, just outside of weight. And they tend to affect our weight, but nobody wants to dive deeper. Then we go to these doctors. They don't have information for us. No, the BMI chart, bodies. somebody said it best. The BMI chart is not for us. So for them to say statistically black women are overweight, Compared to who? We're not even built the same. They need to be a little more realer about it, in my opinion. And I just don't feel like they are being bad. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Because it's, it's, there's, so, there's so much in between that needs to be addressed. Then once we address that issue, then we can get into discipline. Then we can get into consistency. Then we can get into holding black women accountable. But if we don't address the issue, you're going to be unsuccessful. You want these women to lose weight? Dive deeper. I challenge you. Talk to a doctor. Bring a doctor on. And let's have a real conversation about black women and their hormones, their cortisol levels. I tell black women on my page all the time, you need to go get a hormonal panel test done. Stop killing yourself in the gym. If you're killing yourself in the gym, you're not seeing no results. It's because you, your hormones are not balanced. If the doctors keep saying, oh, you just have PCOS. That's what they told me, girl. They told me I had PCOS. Mm. And I didn't have it. I had hormonal issues. I had cortisol issues. I had, um, at the time, uh, self, uh, not self-resistant, is it? No, insulin resistant issues. But then they tried to say I was diabetic. I didn't have diabetes. Wow. So they don't be knowing enough about our bodies. It's, it's no. very rare to come across a doctor. And I, I hate to say it. A lot of them are herbal healers yep. that can truly help us. And then we don't even need a lot. We don't even need a lot. I'm learning how my body can heal itself with the proper herbal uh, supplements. Tea. But no, we, we, we doing things the way white people do things. And we think that shit going to work for us. And it's not working. No. It's not working. So you men need to understand that. You guys want to have these surface level conversations. They're not rooted in solution. They're just rooted in shame, blame, and dismiss. That's it. Our pain is dismissed a lot too because they, you know, in the healthcare fields, um, most of them think that we can take more pain. So they don't take our pain seriously. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Like we need to get real about that because I'm all for that. 
And this militant style, trying to get black women to lose weight, it, it, it's it's not help. It's not helping. When the black men are having heart issues, it's it's not helping. It's not helping. We need to get we need to get real about it, and we got to go beyond the surface because we have these surface level conversations. We're aware men want us to lose weight. We got it. Okay, yeah. what are we gonna do about it? Tired of having the same conversation. Dive deeper. Yeah. Dive deeper, please. And it's not just because, oh, they're just lazy. No, it's more, it's more to that. You got to understand when your hormones are offset, you also are fatigued. You're tired. You don't, you don't even, you barely feel like getting out of bed. Black women need vitamin D and magnesium. Yes. If you do not have vitamin D and magnesium, girl. We low you, on iron. Let's talk about it. How many of y'all be chewing on ice? <laughs> they didn't want to make fun of us talking about black women that be chewing on ice because our iron is low. But if these men are really trying to help us, help us, like help us. It's it's going to take a scientific approach, not this, you need to lose weight. I, I think every time I go to the doctor, I, I think they tell me that that's what I need to do. And they not even really that helpful. You know what they try to do? Put you on a big farm drug. Maybe that's not what I need. Maybe I need tea, literally tea to balance my hormones, to center my cortisol levels, to align my insulin resistant issues so I can lose weight. Right. Come on. It's more than that. And then black women, we tend to have all similar issues. We we all yeah. tend to have the similar issues. It's crazy. That's why yeah. I'm like, it has to be our hormones, sugar, huge. Sugar is huge. And then um, I want to say, uh, I want to say, what's the other thing? Sugar. And then if you're eating uh, chemicals in Process. your meat, processed meat. Yeah. That's, that's huge. Those, those are the two main things that's like really killing us. White women, they can get away with eating, you know, some stuff that maybe we can't and, and they don't have to work as hard. But us, it's different for us. So we can't keep comparing ourselves to them. Y'all know how I am. I allow people to come on here and speak and give their perspective. I don't shut people down when I don't agree. I don't call them out their name. I allow people to speak, period. So Anton did a response video regarding all the backlash. So I like for people to come on and speak their, their piece and somewhat defend themselves because it's just the right thing to do. So I'm going to play this clip. And he made a response to some things, a lot of things that took place over the weekend. Mm. I really wanted to do this on Monday, but he wanted to speak on all the backlash, all the hate that he's getting and things like that. So let's take a listen. Stay on cold is just a wild concept to me. Because what does being on cold mean? I've seen some of the people that's the closest to me betray me. Multiple, several different people betrayed me this weekend. It's wild. Was they on cold? I see, uh, people getting divorced and then throwing their former spouse under the bus every single day. Are they on code? I see people that was supposed to have your back and then go and mention your name and talk negatively about you on other platforms. Are they on code? Y'all make up terms and definitions according to whatever suits, whatever it is that you got going on at the time. You know where my code lies? The same place that it's always been. Rocking with people that roll with me. If I know you in real life and I have your phone number and I've actually linked up with you as far as um, had you in my city, I think that that's a completely different conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you've met my my daughter, and you know you've been to my home. I can't ever mention your name or throw smut on your name in a negative way. 
I don't care what you do to me. Now that's what my code is. And maybe it's just the city that I'm from. I got a different kind of code. You know what I'm saying? My code is a little bit different. Let me also give you another code. My code and my loyalty also lies with my wife. I've seen people say negative things and throw smut on my wife's name. And she ain't never did nothing to nobody. You know what they look like? They was from the black community. You know what people told me? Oh man, ignore it. It's for a bigger purpose. I said, so wait a minute, you telling me that the black community, you know, the ones that killed Malcolm X, you know, those people. You know the ones that was talking negatively and throwing smut on Martin Luther King's name before he died? Yeah, most black people didn't like Martin Luther King before he died. Now he got a holiday in his name. You know, those type of people. You know the same black people that voted for Obama even though he didn't champion none of y'all causes and y'all still holding them down? Yeah, those type of black people. So I'm supposed to hold down these same people. You know the ones that be in your comments? The one now, wait a minute. <laughs> Did he break code first? I thought I thought it was set up that it, once you break code, the loyalty is the loyalty expired. is done. So look, it's expired. So who he's talking about? He's talking about six. Okay, he's that's talking, what I thought. He was talking about six. The goddess. There's been other videos that she saw where he was talking about old oh, y'all women, y'all are grifters, y'all doing the same thing as pearls. So y'all just have y'all y'all titties out and showing y'all body. So it was kind of like he was throwing shots at somebody, you mm. know? And so he threw my name in there. I'm sorry, am I echoing? Okay. Um, yeah, he threw her, he threw me under the bus because Anton wanted to interview me. He wanted to also fly me out to just Detroit and do an interview and also have me on his show. He said it publicly. I will fly you out first class, put mm -hmm. you in a nice hotel. Okay, they are saying it's, there's an echo. I don't know what's going on with that. Just go just go right ahead. Either they want to okay. hear <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, yeah, he said that he was going to, like, you know, treat me right. But I never understood why he wanted to interview me because... I don't know. But then I saw how the whole thing when I was six and it made me question like he threw that in her face like I threw you out. I put you in a nice hotel and mm. you know and then he threw my name in there and told her that he was talking about me. I said you wasn't talking about me at all because Anton just got my number last month. And I told her like I don't want to have nothing to do with that. I don't know why my name was being brought up, and I'm just very disappointed. Like I commended Anton, like Anton, stick to the money talk, stick to the economy talk. This whole relationship stuff. You've been married since you were like, I guess in high school or so out of high school. Like he's been married for a very long time. Right. So wow. I'm like, have that experience and that's what people try to tell him Anton, you don't have the same experience yes you married your 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 wife and that's great you have a beautiful family and everything like that right successful money wise but the relationship stuff and the disrespect i think that just really takes him that really really takes like from a pr standpoint he think being public enemy number one is cool and it's not it's like you lose out on bigger opportunities when you're going against, I guess, code, but it's not even a code you're going against, Anton. Like, you're going against people who support you, people who look up to you, people who see you as a black man who married right. a black woman who has right. a black family who is a black man who's successful that's out here teaching us the game about money. He needs to stick to that. That's why I personally subscribe to his channel because he, when he talks about money, it's like he gives good advice on that, but is he arrogant? Yes. It's and I asked him. I said, Anton, are you do you are you do you think you're a narcissist? He goes, No, I'm a sociopath. <laughs> he said it on the live. I'm a sociopath. And I'm like, Well, I didn't say it. He did. I never called him anything. He asked me, Did I think that he's a narcissist? I said, I can't diagnose you. But what do you think? Right. So I don't know if it's just like this. I don't know if it's for entertainment because I, I would want to believe that obviously his wife and his child loves him. Mm -hmm. There's people 
around him that's like, oh, he's not really like that. So I don't know. I'm like confused because I would have been down to do the interview, but I told him straight up, like, I don't know if I'm going to get this person that says, you hoes, you black hoes, right. you F your kids. I would never want to fly somewhere. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm. By myself in a whole nother city just to get degraded and talk too crazy and sent home like in a bad, bad state of mind. Like I would never want that. So it's like you also don't make people feel safe to want to do that. Like, you mm -hmm. know, because you don't know what you're going to get from that. And all of this extra shit. But there was. Wait, y'all, this is my favorite part. This is my favorite part. But let's continue never subscribed in the first place i know my people did the analytics see what people don't understand is that on youtube you can go through if you have a uh creator's account you can go through and see in the comments exactly who subscribed to you when they read comments every single person that wrote a negative comment in any of your comments none of them was subscribed so if you wasn't rocking with me in the per first place, are you telling me that I'm supposed to throw my wife under the bus or forego what my daughter and my wife uh, mean to me in order to make sure that I'm on call with people that'll kill me and stab me in the back? Y'all smoking crack. I don't know where y'all from. I don't know where y'all came from. Where I'm from, you hold down the people that hold you down. That's where I'm from. You don't go with my mentality and that. See, I don't think that men are standing on business. I see a bunch of men simping. I see a bunch of men pandering. I see a bunch of men that switch up sides whenever their feelings mean something to them. And they don't stand on nothing. I think that, I could be wrong here. I think that real men stand on their square. Now we can agree, we can disagree. Malcolm and Martin, they didn't see things the same way. Absolutely not. But one thing that they wasn't going to do, they wasn't going to talk shit about each other's wives. They wasn't going to throw smut on each other's wives' name. They wasn't gonna... I had a black man. Really, I had a black man. You know what he did? He jumped on my, uh, he jumped on Fight Club and he called my wife a bitch over this weekend. Nobody said nothing. They ain't tripped. Well, Anton, you in you 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 created that invitation, sir. You cre when you was out here calling black women bitches and hoes, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, to them, not just you, general. He you, said it to women, like he just we just I'm watched tired, it. I'm, I'm tired, of, I'm tired of you hoes. I'm, I'm tired of you bitches. I'm tired of you three oh fours. Okay, called okay. A, he called somebody's daughter and mother a monkey. So it's like you yeah. you you give the energy that you the, the energy you give. You're going to get back. So I know nobody. Yeah. No, am I saying his wife deserves that? No, not no. at all. Like Nobody should be calling his wife that. Right. Exactly. But when you put that negative energy out there and call other people directly, a monkey, disgusting, ho, bitch, all this stuff. Don't think that it's not going to come back to you. It's not going to come to you. It's going to come to something that's going to hurt you, which mm -hmm. is where your heart lies is with your family. They're going to attack your wife. Me. They're going to attack his wife because they see yep. that that's his weakness. Mm -hmm. So they're going to hit him where it hurts because mm -hmm. he's hurt other people. Yep. And and it was another man that did it, but he got to understand when you out here calling women bitches and hoes on your platform and you beating on your chest, yeah, I'm the man, I'm a man. Think about the men you're influencing. Think about the men that are attracted to what you're doing. You think they're not going to talk to your wife like that? You think they're not going to talk to your daughter like that? You out of your mind. That's why this whole situation was ridiculous. And now you want to sit here and be like, oh, this man called my wife a bitch. Um, sir, you invited those demons onto your platform and now they're attacking your wife. Uh, I'm not surprised by any of that. You, What you put out is what you get back. And it's just that simple. So now he want to be the victim. <laughs> How many women did you make a victim before you became a victim? Let's think about that for a sec. Let's go through all of these panels and let's really sit here and think about that for a sec. So now your wife's a victim. Your wife is a victim. You not. 
You the instigator. You created all of this mess, all of this drama. You need to be sitting in the corner thinking about your life and where it's going because it is a mess right now and you created all of it, all of it. You got people in your corner turning away from you because they like, bro, you doing way too much. Like, what? what who, who are you? Because this is not the Anton that I met. I met you one time on a panel and I thought you were a respectable guy. I'm like, okay, he married to a black woman. I like a lot of his talking points. There are a lot of things that we agree on, but like, I don't know who this man is today. I, that's why I said, I don't know if it's a character because I've seen like the Anton mm -hmm. where I'm on a panel and they tried to, the men try to tag team me or jump on me and he'll jump in and be like, nah, y'all not about to do that. You know, like he'll come in and I'm like, okay, that's like, okay, cool. Like, you know, and even when he, he made a video about me. I don't know if you're going to talk about that later. No, this, this is the last one okay. because I don't want to add that in. I don't want to add all that yeah. in, but go ahead. You so, can explain it to him. Yeah. So that video, like where I was in the chat, he was talking about Pearly and I said, Anton, I know you're just trying to take up for her because she's the outlier. And you, I feel like Anton probably was the outlier. Like he was the one that probably he wasn't the cool kid right he wasn't the kid that people probably underestimated him so now he's like showing his haters like yeah y'all underestimate me mm -hmm. and here i am right but mm -hmm. you can't do that for everybody everybody don't deserve that you know and so he said to me well Brittany, uh, basically like you know b taylor like you don't work hard enough you don't work hard enough you let Pearl outwork you that I could be bigger than Pearl. My platform could be bigger. He's he pointed out my he pointed out my YouTube channel. I got like 47,000 subscribers. And he pointed out, oh, look at your YouTube channel compared to like Pearly's. You know, like you could be bigger than her, but you don't work hard. First of all, I do work hard. I'm not a 27, 26 year old. <laughs> Let me not use race. <laughs> you know, white woman but it's the truth. With, we, the rich, with the rich father who gave Curly her money. From a, Curly had a trust fund. She, so a lot of black people would be bigger if we had a trust fund. We just right. I'm like, she don't probably pay no bills, but when she started, her bills were probably getting paid for. She had is very privileged and yeah. very come from a very wealthy background. I work for everything. I paid my way through school. Okay. I got my degree. I interned. I didn't work for big places like ESPN and all these other places by myself. I didn't have nobody cheering me on. I had to cheer my damn self on. So if Anton would have took the time to get to know who I am, instead of dragging me and saying that, like I took it as like constructive criticism, but mm -hmm. other people were like, nah, like I don't like the way he just dragged you like that and saying you don't work hard. Because if people really knew me, People really knew me. I have a video right now saying I lost my first job at four months pregnant. Okay. I didn't have a job to like, I didn't know what I was going to do. I worked really hard to get to where I am. I'm pretty successful. I've won awards. I worked my butt off. When I was her age, she ain't touching me. Right, okay. Right, I have right. a whole career outside of YouTube. YouTube is my passion, what I do. But don't compare my YouTube success with somebody else's because I only got 47,000 subscribers. Like, and then you compare me to somebody who got time, who ain't got no she got, Girl, she got employees. What do we, she, she got, got employees. she got a whole staff. She got yeah. us, she got workers, her Africans to do mm -hmm. her thumbnails, to mm -hmm. do her videos, to upload content for her. Everything that I do, I do it by myself. On top yeah. of that, I'm a mom. On top of that, I pay my own bills. On top of that, I take care of, I have a nine to five. I, I work a corp, I'm climbing the corporate ladder. You can't tell me if you got to, a chance to get to know me, you actually be pretty proud where the fuck I came from. Cause I didn't, I didn't have people cheering me on. And I'm sorry for cursing like that, but it just, it just makes me mad because I have people commenting saying, get to work, get to work. Like, are you doing it as in like you believe in me? Or are you doing it as in like, you won't have no room to talk because you're not as successful. I am successful. I'm just successful yes. in my own way. They don't see they don't see our success because um, they feel like because they mama did it. That's what we supposed to do. So it get it 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 doesn't get any real recognition from them at all. But that I just wanted to show this clip towards the end because I just thought it was kind of interesting how he felt some type of way for people attacking his wife. But I'm like. 
you invited those people into your space. And of course, they're going to call your wife out her name because that's what you were out here promoting. So they thinking that that's who you are. So I'm going to match that energy with what you put out. And so now he's upset about, about that. But I'm like, listen, it is what it is. How, the language that you use on your platform, it, it, it will create a certain audience for you. So you got to be careful with that.